So I've seen a couple of videos now where ballistics gel is being tested for knives, for cutting, for piercing. But as the people doing the testing have said, ballistics gel isn't really meant for that. <clears throat> it's, it's meant for testing bullets. One of the problems that there seems to be in low velocity testing is that it has too much cohesion that its point of plasticity is far too high and the self healing nature means that it doesn't even want to let a blade pass through whether through cutting or piercing and it occurred to me what if you introduced an aggregate something in it that allowed it to separate easier what about a silt or a sand and I actually bought a bag of fine white beach sand. It's mostly ground up quartz, but you know there's going to be some nacrate in there from seashells, and there's going to be some organic debris, there's going to be salt, there's going to be bacteria. This stuff would require desalination and possibly classifying and we, we don't exactly know what what this is wholly comprised of yet. The other problem with using a powder that does not dissolve is settlement. And so I have to think a little bit more on that. Maybe after this, this uh, I don't want to call it an experiment, just messing around, trying to figure something out. I'll have a better idea, hopefully. So... What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be mixing approximately a 20% gelatin. Now, I have a two cups measuring cup here, or one, or one pint measuring cup. That's also 500 milliliters. 20% of 500 is 100. So if I fill this to the 100 milliliter line, and then I make up the difference in water with 400 milliliters. I'm gonna pour it in. We're gonna say about 100 milliliters at a time. As I pour it in, I'm going to mix it up. Now my understanding from the reading I have done is that gelatin in general turns out better if you allow it to soak up some water previous to fully dissolving it. So that's about half the water I intend to use altogether. I'm going to give it probably about 15 minutes to really soak that up. And my understanding uh, is that this is called blooming gelatin. So I think I've given this a sufficient amount of time to bloom. I can still see a little bit of powderiness, but that powderiness is wet. And look how that acts. That's already behaving kind of like I want it to. It's almost like one of those bouncy balls you get out of a vending machine. So I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the water because at the moment this is more like 40%. And I'm going to go ahead and mix that in there. You can see areas here where it didn't bloom thoroughly. And I think that's because when I added the powder, I added it all in one go, and then I added water. I probably should have, should have done a little bit of powder, a little bit of water, a little bit of powder, a little bit of water, until I was convinced that the water had fully saturated it, and then let it stand. But having done it this way, I'm left with these clumps. So 
So I still have these clumps. I'm just going to grab the big ones and I'm going to flick them out. So I have here some dryer lint, some of the cloth that I was using that was extra from the tea tunic video. I'm the first attempt at a tea tunic on a sewing machine. What I wanted to do here was saturate these fibrous materials in the solution and then freeze them in these containers. So I'm just going to use a little bit of olive oil and I'm using olive oil because it's thick, it's clean, and extra virgin olive oil has very low acidity. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a soaking. And the idea with this one is to try to create a good cutting analog for skin. Sort of thinking with this, that how it needs to go is you have to have several layers. You have to have something that simulates skin. You have to have something else that simulates organs. Okay, I can feel that this wants to break apart. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that just comes right apart. Let's see if we can salvage this somehow. I am going to slop it in there. Make sure it's sort of thoroughly distributed and fairly evenly distributed. It's not going to be perfect, I can tell. Now this is oil soaked, which, you know what? Why not? Let, let, let's add a little more oil to this. I'll go ahead and take out some of the excess by using this to grease it. Maybe that's our human skin. Who knows? Now what we're left with is this really dirty gelatin. Let's see if my idea about settlement is correct. And I'll just add some of this in here. We'll mix it up real good in there. But I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to put all four of these into the freezer for 30 minutes and see what comes of it.